Hey guys, I'm going to walk you through two examples of how to use Ajax in a Rails application. The first example is adding a comment to a list of comments without having the page refresh. So when I click this button here, this comment will be added to this list asynchronously, which means the page will not refresh. So if you watch up here, you'll notice that the page won't um, refresh. So one way to do this is to use a respond to block, which is right here in your create action, and then pass it a format to JS. And what this does is it will look for a create.js.erb file in your corresponding view directory. So in my case, that would be this file here, which is under my, it's under my views, comments, and then it's create.js.erb. And what this does is it's similar to .html.erb. And what happens is any Ruby in this file will get rendered first, and then the JavaScript will get rendered. And what that means is that I can still use partials or any other Ruby and that will get rendered and then the JavaScript will take over and take that rendered partial and add it to the page. So for example, if there aren't any errors with our model or the object that we're trying to save, this JavaScript will run, or I should say the Ruby is gonna run first. So the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna render this comment partial which is right here. And this is Rails convention to do underscore comment. Um, so it's under the comments directory and it's called underscore comment.html.erb. So that's Rails convention. And this is the partial that will load and then all of this ERB will get rendered. So I'm, that's why I'm able to write render comment. It Ruby or Rails I should say is smart enough to know to look at this particular partial. And then we just wrap it in escape JavaScript to make sure that it's sanitized. So then this will render first. It'll create the HTML we need. And then the JavaScript will render next. And it's gonna look for an ID of comments, which I had to add myself. And then it's gonna place this JavaScript or this HTML on the page. And then as good practice, I just reset the form. Another important thing to note is you don't want to set local true to your form. And in my case, I have two forms for the comments, one to create a new one and one to edit one. The one to create a new comment, I made sure to remove local true. However, when I'm editing a comment, I'm not using Ajax. So that's why I'm using local true. And to just use the dry principle and not repeat myself, I broke out my comment fields into a partial. And all that does is it just allows me to have one partial for my form. And then I can conditionally load a job or an asynchronous one or a synchronous one. The next example I want to show you is a little more useful. And it's just the ability to add an associated model to a form. So imagine if I was writing on a post and I had written everything out and then I realized that the author I need to associate this post with doesn't exist. So that would mean I would have to add the author and then I would have to refresh this page so that they would be in the select list and it would mean I would lose everything I had just written. So I can show you here that by using Ajax I can create this author and they'll automatically get added to this select list. So the way to do this is very similar, if not identical to what we did with adding a new comment. So in the create action, we want to use a respond to block and then have a format format.js call. And again, that's going to look for a create.js.erb file in the corresponding views directory. And the only difference here is that we're just looking for a select list. 
So we're looking for this select list and what this, so this just looks for the select list. It's gonna remove the selected value. So at first I, I believe this person was selected and you can only have one selected value in a select list at a time. So what it does is it's gonna look for the selected value and remove that attribute. So there won't be any, any item that is selected in this list. It's then going to dynamically add a new option to the select list. And it's gonna use it based on the author that we just created. And it's gonna select, it's gonna set the selected attribute to selected by default too. And that's how I was able to set this new value to be selected. If I didn't do that, this value would just get added to the list, but it wouldn't be selected by default. You would have to go and click it. So it wouldn't be as obvious to a user. And again, this is similar to the comment create js.erb file where this Ruby is going to get rendered first. And then once it's rendered, the JavaScript will take over and dynamically insert that into the select list. And then we just clear out the form.